Good morning, Amelia Baptist Church and community. Uh, I'm excited to be with you on this Monday morning. Uh, you may It may be early for you, it may not be. I hope you've had your coffee, maybe had your breakfast, read your Bible, and spent some time with the Lord. Um, but I want to just come with you now, bring to you... Go on out, Jaylee. So I, obviously I'm working at home right now. I may have some guests show up. Go on, baby. Yeah, so we're going to be, uh, <laughs> give them a second to leave. Sorry about that. Um, we're going to be looking in Luke chapter 13 uh, this morning, continuing, like I said, uh, just walking forward to Easter to, um, to, to look at some passages each day until Easter, to look at some passages that help us to see what how we should live and what our lives should look like in light of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We could even say in light of Jesus' instructions that we talked about yesterday uh, during our Sunday service to seek first the kingdom of God. So I'm going to read, I'm going to pray for us first. That'd be a good place to start and then I'll read our text. Father, we thank you for this morning and we just thank you that we can join together for a few minutes this morning to open your word together, to pray, and to uh, just share with each other. Father, I pray that you would reveal your truth to us, that you would uh, just remind us, encourage us, and help us to live more like you every day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So I'm going to read uh, Luke 13, the first five verses in Luke 13. At that time, some people came and reported to him, that's to Jesus, about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifice. And he responded to them, Do you think that these Galileans were more sinful than all other Galileans because they suffered these things? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will also perish as well. Or those 18 that the Tower of Siloam fell on and killed, do you think they were more sinful than all other people who live in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as well. Now the first reality that we're going to see of what it takes and what it means to, to, to be a disciple of Jesus, to be a follower of Jesus, to be one who seeks God's kingdom before this kingdom, to live in light of the resurrection, the first thing that we have to do is that we have to repent and believe in Jesus Christ. Um, Jesus, th these people come to Jesus and they're saying, hey, Jesus, uh, what's so bad about these folks that, that Pilate killed? What's so bad about these folks at the Tower of Siloam fell? Now, we don't know what Pilate did exactly. We don't have any historical uh, record of this happening outside of what Luke gives us. We don't really know uh, what happened when the Tower of Siloam fell, but I do think we can see two kinds of tragedies that Jesus addresses. First, he addresses a tragedy um, we could call it a, a, a attack, a terror, uh, whatever, whatever kind of, but a human-made tragedy of Pilate killing these people and mixing their blood with the sacrifice. We can also see a natural disaster. I don't know why the Tower of Siloam fell. Maybe it was poor construction. Maybe it was an earthquake. Maybe it was, you know, heavy rains that had water. We don't know. But uh, a disaster that was not caused by someone like Pilate. Uh, we're in the midst of a, di of, of a kind of disaster right now, a pandemic uh, where, where thousands of people are, are infected and dying. And uh, we're all having to, to be locked down and locked in our homes, uh, staying away from work, staying away from other things, staying away from church and fellowship in the normal ways uh, or the usual ways. But uh, Jesus is, is telling them it. Uh, these aren't the questions. You see, we could be tempted to ask questions right now, and, I, uh, and I'm sure some will say, I'm sure some have said that, that this virus is God's judgment for whatever uh, sin or whatever specific sin. I don't, I don't know that we can say that. God does send judgment sometimes, uh, but, but I, I can say in Scripture, every time God sends some kind of physical judgment like a pestilence or a plague or anything, He always tells people, what he's doing and what he's judging them for. Uh, I, I can say that this pandemic is something that God does allow. 
Um, but but regardless of the reason that's here, the, the question to say, is this God's judgment or why did God let this happen, is not the right question. And that's what Jesus is saying to these, the, these, these Jewish uh, folks right now. He's saying, you're worried about the wrong thing. You see, you're asking about the sin of the people who Pilate killed or the people who the Tower of Siloam fell. He said, you're worried about your physical death. And I'm not saying we shouldn't take precaution. I'm not saying we shouldn't do what's careful. I'm not saying we shouldn't be affected or hurt or sad when people are, are sick or die. But our primary focus, the most important focus for us, is our eternal life with, with Jesus Christ and with the Lord. Uh, Jesus is addressing not physical death. We're all going to die physically at some point. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. It could be 80 years down the road. But Jesus is saying what is most important is whether you have repented or not repented, whether you have made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life or not. And he's, he's speaking to people who, who apparently have not repented, who have heard Jesus' teaching, who, who see who he is. And he's saying, you need to get your focus right, and you need to repent of your sin and follow Jesus. I'm going to read one other passage uh, right here from, from uh, John 11, verses 25 and 26. Jesus says here, he's speaking to um, Mary and Martha. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And then he says to Mary and Martha, do you believe this? That's the question for all of us today. Do we believe that no matter what happens to us in this life, no matter whether we live or die, we will die, no matter what this world brings, if we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we will never die. We have an eternal life waiting for us. A home not built with hands is what Paul says in 2 Corinthians. Uh, waiting to, 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 to accept us, to, to take us, to give us the life that God has created for so I say that to say to those of you out here who are worried, who are concerned about whatever it may be, you might be uh, asking the wrong question. The most pressing question, the most immediate need is whether you have made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, whether you've repented of your sins and accepted him into your life, whether you've done, as Paul says in, in Romans chapter 10, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believed in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Because when you do those things, Paul says, God will save you. He does not reject. He does not turn us away when we come to him in repentance and salvation. And if you're out there and you've never done that, I want to encourage you, uh, please do it. Call somebody you know who's a Christian. Call a pastor. Call a friend. You can call me. You can call me at uh, I've already given my cell phone out so many times, I'll give it again. You can call me at 409-554-5859, and I would love to tell you uh, what it is to know Jesus and to repent and to make him uh, the Lord of your life. If you're out there and you are a Christian, remember, we have a hope that the world needs. We don't need to live in such a way. Yes, again, we're, we're careful. We take precaution. We do what we should do. Where We need to be wise, especially in this time. But our responses can't be responses of fear or despair, but responses of trust and hope in God. That's my encouragement for you today. While, while I've got you here, I want to just remind you of a few other things uh, that we some we announced yesterday uh, for you to check out. Please check out our, our website. We've just built a new webpage, ameliabaptistchurch.org. You can uh, catch up on, on current or previous sermons there. You can um, read about the church, read about some of our ministries. There's a new page where you can fill in prayer requests that will either go to, to uh, multitudes of people to be praying for you or that will stay private between me and our church leadership to be praying for whatever need you have. You can reach out to me and ask any question or share any need on that page. Uh, you can also give online there uh, to, to, to get your, your tithes or offerings in, help to support the ministry that we are, are doing now and will continue to do. Um, through this pandemic and, and after. There's also going to be shortly, we're going to be adding some new resources, some Bible studies and videos and things for you and your children uh, to, to look at, to read, to study, to continue to grow in the Lord during this uh, time at home. Uh, you, you may not have seen yet, uh, but you can also see on our Facebook page and a link on our webpage and on uh, a, a dedicated YouTube page, Miss Hannah has shared her first 
children's video. Uh, it's going to be an encouragement. It may be fun for you to do even if you're not a child. So check out that video. Um, it's linked on our webpage, on our Facebook, and you can look it up there as well and follow her on YouTube as she, as she does that. Also check out the new children's Facebook page and children's Instagram uh, to just keep up to date and help spread the word of what we're doing at Amelia Baptist Church. Um, uh, I do also just want to let you know the president didn't announce yesterday that he's encouraging the, the current status quo of our um, uh, social distancing and staying at home and all of this until the end of April, till April 30th. Um, so I, I think that's where we're going to be. Uh, the Lord could act in a miraculous way and we could be out of this uh, pandemic sooner, but go ahead and plan on joining us electronically. Uh, through the end of April, plan on an incredible Easter service and celebration over Facebook and Instagram and, and, and the internet. Um, spread the word and invite people to join us. Uh, I will be joining you tomorrow. Uh, it might be a little bit later in the day because I'm going to try and join a, a conference call with some other pastors and church leaders, but uh, it will be sometime after at or after 11 o'clock. You can watch it live or watch it later on the recording. Um, I look forward to seeing you then. I'm going to pray for us now, and uh, then that'll be the end of this, this broadcast. Father, we thank you so very much for the opportunity to come together. Uh, during this, this, this special time of fellowship, of uh, joining together every day over Facebook and Instagram um, until, uh, until Easter, God, I just look forward to this time of walking through your word with, with our church and with others. Father, I pray that you would nourish us and speak to us. God, I pray during this coronavirus that you would bring blessing and protection to all of our nurses, doctors, hospice nurses, um, healthcare workers, and, and those in retirement and, and assisted living facilities, all first responders, all those uh, serving groceries or working in the drive through at restaurants or, or cleaning up or whatever those who are doing, who are carrying out these essential needs for us. Father, I pray that you would keep them safe and you would keep them protected. Pray that you would provide all that they and their families need. Father, we pray for those who are infected with the coronavirus, that you would bring healing, that you would bring peace, that you would bring comfort. And Father, those who have lost loved ones, Father, we pray that you would minister as only you can to those people. I pray, God, that, that, that you would give the peace that passes all understanding. And I pray that uh, of your people who have been infected or lost loved ones as Christians, that we would show uh, our hope in the future in our mourning and in our lament. Father, we pray for our president and all of our leaders federally, uh, the state level and locally, as they make decisions to keep us safe and keep us well. Father, I pray that you would give them wisdom and discernment and that we would, would simply obey and follow their instructions. And Father God, I pray for our missionaries who are serving in, uh, in the midst of this virus all around the world. Pray that you would strengthen them and minister them, protect them, and help them to carry out the work that you have laid before them. Father God, we pray that you would bring an end to this pandemic. We pray that you would defeat this coronavirus that we might um, move forward and avoid any more loss of life or, or illness. Father God, I pray that you would not uh, have us focus on getting back to normal, but have us focus on thriving in this time and growing and not getting back to normal, but, but getting back to the reality that you give us and advancing in, in ministry, both advancing in our personal walk with you and our corporate walk as a church and, and in the lives of other peoples and our witness and our example in this world. We love you, Father. We praise you. We thank you for saving us and thank you for this day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.